Good day. It's good to see all of you join us again today as we have our lesson number three on the Wilderness Series. Today with me is our elders from Life Center PH Church, Eddie Underwood and Linda Story, and I'm Pastor Phyllis. And it's good to have you join us today as we go into today keeping a positive perspective even in the wilderness. In the scripture in 1 Corinthians 10 and 5, Paul says to us, but with most of them, them being the children of Israel who had just come out of Egypt, it says God was not well pleased for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. And you know, when I read that, it's like, oh, that's such a sad ending to a story. It's like one of those movies that you watch and instead of everybody getting across and everybody going to their destiny, that you find that they die in the wilderness. The ones that came out, the ones that saw what God could do by the parting of the Red Sea, they all died in the wilderness. And so when I read that, it's like, oh, that's so sad. But you know what? A spiritual wilderness does not have to be a negative time, but we have to be eager to obey what God is saying to us. And I mean, I know that kind of sounds um, like it's counter, you know, just counteracting what I've just said, but the truth is, when you're in the wilderness, it's really, really important at that point in time mm -hmm. to have a positive attitude and to lean upon what God is saying and what he has already said. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's talk about it just for a little bit. I wanted to know why and what a negative attitude does to our human bodies, Ooh. you know, because Thinking yeah. affects our body. So this is what I came up with. So if you're suffering from any of these, check your attitude. <laughs> Upsets our hormone balance. Oh, I must be already there. <laughs> <laughs> it depletes the brain chemicals. Mm. It damages our immune system. Wow, wow. Boy, and here we are going through this virus thing. Maybe it's that negative attitude that we need to be checking. Right, That's, right. Good. That's good. It causes constipation, insomnia, high blood pressure and stomach ulcers. My, my, my. A lot of the complaints today. Yes. Right? And I wanted to find somebody that had gone through this, so I went to Genesis, Adam and Eve, and when they sinned, their outlook changed. You know, they walked with God, they yeah. talked with God, but in Genesis 3, 7, and 8 it says, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God. They got scared of him. Yeah. You know, when they sinned, yes. here come fear yes. into their lives, and they were scared of God. Mm -hmm. So it affected them physically. Negatively. Negatively. Yes. Right. Mm, that's the thing. Fear is not of God. Of God. Mm. Right. So right. When, they, when they sort of replaced it, you know, mm -hmm. for that little short time, then they wanted to hide yeah. or cover their sin. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They wanted to cover it. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That's good. And you know, so many times we think about these things and we say, well, you know, I love the Lord with all my heart, you know, and I'm trying my best to serve him. But, you know, that doesn't stop us from getting a negative attitude about right. things. And especially when the heat right. turns up. Or in some places where we talk about being squeezed, it's in those times that whatever's in us is going to come out. Yes. You know, how, you know, I asked the question today, how do you or did you respond in the beginning of this thing with the quarantine? How do you respond at the very onset of a wilderness time? I mean, do you panic or do you abandon what God has already done for you and fall back into some of the old habits? I find this a lot of time, especially in young Christians, that whenever, you know, the squeeze comes on, whenever, you know, hard times come, then all of a sudden, before it's over with, they're back like the old man all over again. Um, they, they behave unwisely. They get to the place of where they lose focus 
and they lose the ability to continue follow the Lord. They go back to what seemed natural to them. And if you'll remember the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness, what was it they cried out for? What was it? It wasn't, Lord, show us your glory. Yes. It wasn't, yes. God, show us more of you. It was, I want leeks and onions. I just cannot get that out of my head. That that's what stayed on their mind was what they once had in life. And so sometimes the things that happen in our life, like a sudden job loss or, you know, a sudden illness or we start having trouble with one of our children that's out of our control or we lose our financial freedom or maybe there is some something that goes wrong in our marriage and then all of a sudden we think we got to do something to make things right you know that that drastic move we'll go out here you know and and do something foolish in the process of it thinking that it's going to bring us instantaneous happiness and it will cause things to you know be restored back to normal but you know what it doesn't do it it doesn't do it the only thing that will bring us out of the wilderness is what? The Lord. the Lord and the change of our attitude, that positive perspective that's going to bring us out of any of our situations. You know, when we're young, we, uh, we're going to live forever. And, and people die, they're always two generations beyond. And you really don't, all we know is, and, and that's a lot of people, they, they don't, they can't see beyond here. Right. They don't realize that there is somewhere else beyond here. And yet when you get our age, now we realize we're that next generation. Yeah. Yes, yes. We've watched them, we've watched them pass and go on from two and three beyond us. Right. And, and, and then all of a sudden it's a shake. It's like, here we are. And I think that's a lot of it. We don't, we don't, we don't take, we take things for granted. We take life for granted too much because, like I said, we're young, strong, and everything's good. We don't have the heartburns and the things you was talking about. Well, yeah, we don't, we don't have those problems. You know, we know everything. Yeah, right. And, and, right. and we don't. It's, it's we, we, we take too much for granted. We need to realize. People need to realize. Mm -hmm. You, this is not the end. Right. This is the beginning. Yeah. Right. And you know, so much people look for an escape route. They don't like hard times. No. Mm -hmm. Nobody yeah. likes hard times. I don't like hard times. But I do find this, that the hard times, when I look back over my life, oh, yeah. the hard times yeah. were the times that I grew the most mm -hmm. and the times that my faith in God was solidified. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's like I know I can trust God because I remember what he brought me through. And if we try to run away or escape those times, it seems like that this is what keeps bringing these hardships around. I was reading one of the scriptures. It said here um, in Deuteronomy 8 and 2, it says, And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. Now see there, it's already letting us know God never left them. No. He no. was with them that entire 40 years. He said to humble you and to test you and to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And then in Exodus 13 and 17, it says, Then it came to pass, that when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. He mm -hmm. knew they would do exactly like we would do. Yes. We would look for an escape route to go back to exactly like we used to be. So God led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. We so try to escape. Right. And yet God is telling us we've got to keep a positive attitude while we're going through the wilderness. And you know there were only two that actually made it. 
And the reason they made it was because of that positive attitude. Can you name them? Can you name them? Warren, Joshua. And Caleb. Yes. Those were the two that came out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was that positive attitude. Yes, we can take those giants because the Lord is with us. Right, right. Then I looked up positive attitude. What does that do to our... <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah. Let's hear it. We need to know yes. what will give us a positive. Some things that. we really like. Yeah. It lowers the blood pressure. Yeah. We have less heart disease. This is a good one. Better weight control. Woo-woo! Healthier blood sugar and an improved quality of life. So I looked up somebody about this, and I've been reading in the about the prophet Habakkuk. And in the book of Habakkuk, he just gives God a hard time. God, your people... They are so bad. Look what they're doing. Why don't you come down and do something to them? This is what he said. He, oh, I got the wrong scripture. He would tell them, he said, well, God, they're doing this and they're doing that, but, you know, you're not doing anything about them. And every time he would do that, God would answer him back. And it took a long time before he ever started seeing it through a positive mm. attitude. Yeah. And then he said this when he saw it through the positive attitude. He said, though the fig trees... Does not bud. Oh, yeah. And there are no grapes mm. in the vines. Yes. Though the olive crops fail and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. Okay, all those things yes. he already complained to God about. Yes. But then he said, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord and I will be joyful in God my Savior. Amen. In other words, what he was saying. I can see the circumstances. I'm not blind. Yes. I'm not like those out here that, you know, that speak as though nothing. I'm not sick. I'm not sick. In the name of Jesus, I'm not sick. Right. When their nose is running, they've got a high fever. and all. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not recognizing the circumstances, but it's believing that God's going to make a way somehow. Amen? Right. Amen. You got anything? Well, what I've got, I was sort of... I want to close with it. Okay. But it would be, but it would be a question to you. Something that just hit me. We've never, I've never referred to this as a wilderness experience. But share what you shared when you said you got tired of going to the altar for the same old thing. Yeah. You was in the wilderness. As, yes. as I think yes. about it, yes. that you yeah. was actually in the wilderness experience. Yeah. Well, that was part of my seeking more from God was I was in a mainline denomination and there was not the belief of being filled with the Holy Spirit as we do as Pentecostals. So therefore, I would find myself caught up in the same old sin. And in that, that particular dom denomination at that time, what you would do is when you felt convicted in a service, then you would go up to the pastor, you know, and you'd take his hand at the altar during the invitation at the end, and you'd kind of confess to him what you were there for, and then he would pray for you, and you'd go back. Well, I just kept finding myself going back for the same old thing. And I finally said to the Lord one day, I said, Lord, if you've got so much power that you can save my soul from hell, then why in the world can you not give me the power to get over this yes. sin in my life. And it wasn't long after that that the Lord opened a door and someone witnessed to me about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And I began to seek after what this more was that I needed from the Lord. And you know what? I, today, it wasn't even five years after all of that conversation with the Lord that I was totally free from that very thing. Out of the wilderness. Out of the wilderness. I finally came out of the wilderness. And you know, the Lord didn't intend for that to be a 40-year journey. No, no. It was an 11-day journey, even the route. Really, it wasn't but a three-day journey. But he didn't want, as I read in the scriptures a moment ago, moment ago, he didn't want to take them up by the Philistines because he knew when they saw that war was there, it would, it would frustrate them, it would scare them, and they'd run back to Egypt. So he took them around another way, which was 11 days that would totally avoid war and bring them right into their promised land. But when they got there, they absolutely could not see what God wanted to do. 
And so I want to ask us today, has the hardship and the frustration and maybe even the defeat that you're going through, are you failing to understand that it is a season that God has possibly led you to in order to bring spiritual maturity in you and to help you have a positive perspective that God's got something for me even in the middle right. of all this mess. Mm -hmm. If anybody's tired of going through the same old thing over and over and over, there is a way out. There right. is. Right. There, there is. is. And Solomon had a very wise comment that, you know, I, I think would be good right now. And it's Proverbs 17, 22. He says, a cheerful heart is good medicine. Mm. Be a positive attitude. That will help you through. He said, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Yes. Yes. Watch your attitude. Yes. And so as we close today, we just want to take a moment and we want to pray with you. And that whatever you're going through and whatever you're coming out of, that whatever it is, that you can glean from it the good and not the bad. Yes. Because God's got a purpose in it. And he has a way out just for you. And when you come out, you will be thanking God for yes. the way he has done it. Amen. 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 And how about closing us tonight and praying with us today and praying for the people. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for yes. this time to be able to share and to, to enter into homes. And thank you for the people that are allowing us to come into their homes and their lives. Yes, Jesus. Lord, if, if there's anybody there that is listening that has the problem, that has been going through things over and over again, yes, there Lord. is a way out. And it's called Jesus. Yes, Father. And Father, even Christians, there's some Christians that still go through those same yes. things uh, as as was said a few minutes ago uh, rededicating and rededicating and rededicating uh, there's we've shared this in our church but there's nothing in your word that says anything about rededicating your life you said repent yes, yes you yes. did you said repent and sometimes that's the thing that we let we don't do that's the key so father there's one there that's having these problems may they know Yes. Just repent yes. and be yes. delivered and be yes. set free and not be wandering around any longer. Yes. Find their way out. So again, we thank you. Yes. We praise you for that one that has got victory today. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Smile. God's got you.